pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another mini book haul for Vlogmas, keeping things short and sweet. So let's get started without any ado. Not, never mind, further ado. No ado at all. The first one is Flames by Robbie Arnott, an Australian novel. There's a lot of buzz. I first heard about it on Simon Savage's channel and then a couple more and I had money burning a hole in my pocket, ordered it from Amazon and got it the next day. It's a gorgeous book set in Tasmania. Let's listen to the opening, shall we? Our mother returned to us two days after we spread her ashes over Notley Fern Gorge. She was definitely our mother, but at the same time, she was not our mother at all. Since her dispersal among the fronds of Notley, she had changed. Now her skin was carpeted by spongy, verdant moss and thin tendrils of common, filmy fern. Six large fronds of tree fern had sprouted from her back and extended past her waist in a layered peacock tail of vegetation. And her hair had been replaced by cascading fronds of lawn-colored maiden hair, perhaps the most delicate fern of all. This kind of thing wasn't uncommon in our family. Duh! I obviously have forgotten whatever I've heard about this because that doesn't sound like realistic f f fiction. Uh, oh, I see it's just scanning. I don't want to read. I don't like reading the synopsis, but I see there's some stuff in this family with spontaneous combustion and fading into the mighty folkloric splendor of the natural world. Well, it has captured my interest. Robbie Arnott is from Lanciston, which sounds like the UK rather than Australia. I don't know if that's true, but he's pretty cute. And I've been hearing really good things about this, so I will get to it. Another Blame It On Booktube acquisition, which in this case is definitely Blame It On Eric Carl Anderson, is this Welsh novel, Mostyn Thomas and the Big Rave, by Richard Williams, just published in the last month or so. And it's about a Welsh farmer in Pembrokeshire on the brink of bankruptcy, who decides to host raves in his barn or his Quonset. Well, that captures my interest, and I'm really getting into Welsh literature. So let's hear how the first paragraph of this... Cleddai. What? Cleddai. Okay, well, I checked the Welsh pronunciation, so I'm going to do my best with this one place name in this paragraph. But notice how different it sounds if you're not a Welsh speaker to how it's written. Every morning, suspended in his harness, Trevor would pan across the ancient estuary of the Cleve to the heads and out to the ocean. On a calm, clear day, the rising sun would beam through the clouds of mist that hung over the water like sleeping ghosts, then explode into the thousands of fibers and textures that existed on the shores. Well, I'm doing this as a buddy read in January, this Japanese novella, Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. And I'm ashamed, well, I maybe don't blame myself entirely for forgetting the name of Richard's channel because he hasn't put up a video for a half a year or more. But he's a buddy of mine and I can't remember the name of his channel anymore. It's something Richard or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry, Richard, but uh, I've done a few buddy reads with him and uh, looking forward to doing this one. And the opening sentences don't have any standalone vitality, so we'll leave it at that. Next, I don't know whether you will see the vlog video where I bought this at the bookstore on Friday or not. By the time this video goes live, I'm not sure of the order. Regardless, I'll quickly mention I bought this the other day. Small Country by Gail Fay. And this is a novel from, set in Burundi and Rwanda newly published this year in translation, translated from the French by Sarah Ardizone, 2018 translation, 2016 novel. And Gail Fay was born in 1982 in Burundi to a French father and a Rwandan mother. I've heard good things. I think maybe I've heard mixed things about it. And again, there's nothing of a standalone uh, interestingness to the opening lines, but 
uh, the page 112 was wonderful, which is why I bought it. And the last one I've had on my shelves for maybe a year, but I never got around to hauling it because the opening paragraph didn't grab me. Like, I don't think it, if I end up enjoying this book, it won't be because of the writing. But this is the first novel from Madagascar to ever be translated into English, Beyond the Rice Fields by Naivo. And Naivo, I won't try to pronounce... Well, I'll try to pronounce it. His full name is Naivo Harisoa Patrick Ramamanjisoa. And his pen name is Naivo. It's a good choice. Wow. He uh, lives and works as a journalist in Ottawa, Canada. Translated from the French by Alison M. Charette. And it is uh, a story set in the upheavals of Madagascar's past as it confronted Christianity and modernity through the twin narratives of a slave and his master's daughter. I think I heard about this from Russell of Ink and Paper Blog's channel and ordered it, haven't got to it. It's a chunkster, 350 pages, and I'll let you know how it goes. But I've had that one for quite a while. So, that's my five book book haul. Have you read any of these? Which of these would you be most likely to pick up? Thanks for watching.